I just want to take some time on this evening, on the 1st of April 2021, when we reflect on the Last Supper of Christ, reflect on the events of that evening when he was crushed in the garden. It was there that the scripture tells us that he prayed and asked that this cup would be taken from him. But he also appealed in obedience to his father and said, but your will be done. And then it says, the scripture tells us distinctly that he was in such deep agony that blood came forth in such physical and emotional and spiritual distress that his very makeup as a man who was fully God was, was stretched to its capacity. You see, this place in Gethsemane is known as the place of the press where olives are pressed out. Is it a coincidence that it is there that our Savior is pressed out? Everything that he has, he is abandoning in the obedience that will take him to the cross that he who had no sin would take on our sin that we might be imparted with his righteousness. Here was the son who continually sought the blessing, direction, and relationship that he had with his father in all matters, assuring that he would be in constant and complete unity with his father's will. And on this occasion, it comes to such a climax that he agonizes over this to the very core of who he is as both God and man. It was a time of such extreme and unbearable crushing and it all happened in this place of the pressing. The son staggers under the weight of the judgment that is about to come upon him as he journeys to the cross, and he never wavers in his submission to his father, yet he pleads for a release because of the intensity of the dramatic exposure to the brutality that would come in his sacrificing of his life as he lays it down as the shepherd for the sheep. Some people might explain this hesitation coming from the tremendous pain, torture, and suffering that he was anticipating as he took on the sins of the world. But it's quite possible the massive heartache and agony that he was beginning to feel as he was crushed in the garden came from knowing that he would bear the weight of the sin of the world and the knowledge that he would be abandoned from the relationship he had known before time existed, before time came into being as he existed in eternity from everlasting to everlasting, and he gave up that role as he came to earth and humbled himself to become the Savior of the world and to give us the relationship that we might have with our Heavenly Father, knowing the righteousness that Christ imparts to us. It was here as he was crushed out that he stepped into the obedience that the cross would demand, that the sin of the world would separate him from his Father as he gave himself to reconcile us to become children of God.
You see, not in his role as deity, he could not do that, but in his role as humanity, as he came fully God and fully man, he was able to die in the flesh and to be spiritually disconnected that he might connect us as children of God. He would fulfill every prophecy. He would fulfill, fulfill the prophecies of, of David. He would fulfill the prophecies of Isaiah. He would abandon himself on the cross. That we might experience the relationship that God had designed us to experience before sin ever entered the world. It could be said that the Father abandons Christ in the flesh, and this was required for the redeeming of all people for all time. It is a great and indescribable love that our Father has for us, that even though we are hopelessly lost in our own sin, that he would care enough in his great mercy to redeem us. It is incredible love that demanded that the Heavenly Father accept the death of his beloved Son and allow the crushing weight that begins in the garden to reach the climax at the cross where the Son cries out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? It is the incredible love of our Lord that lays down his life to be crushed, to be broken, to be pierced, to be abandoned, that we might be reconciled to our God. It is an unfathomable crushing, it is an, an indescribable piercing, it is an incredible wounding, it is incredible whipping and torture and, and horrific in its details. We cannot imagine or even comprehend this crushing in the garden. We cannot imagine or even comprehend this love that held Jesus on the cross. But we can be ever so thankful for the forgiveness and freedom it gives us. What was pressed out in the garden were the first steps of the journey that would secure our salvation. Thanks be to God that he was pierced for our transgressions, that he was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was put upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. There was a great crushing that began in the garden that was fulfilled when he died on the cross that we might have life. Life here, abundant and free, and eternal life forever and ever. Thanks be to God for the indescribable gift of Jesus Christ. Amen.